We just got some A320 motherboards in. I got an X99 One and Z board in, also a Snowman CPU cooler and an RX 470 graphics card and a 12 core CPU. And who could forget the thermal pads for a dollar? This is all from AliExpress here on the desk. And I've been an avid user of this website for over five years now. So today we're gonna to talk about not just if AliExpress is safe or not, but all the pros and cons to using this website in 2020. Let's go. Today's video is sponsored by Dashlane. Dashlane is something that I've come to use a lot nowadays as I use more and more websites and of course having a tiered password list I don't want to give out my tier one important passwords to any other website that I don't trust and there is a lot of them whether it's an e-tailer that you're using for the first time Netflix Stan or Reddit I feel comfortable remembering my tier one passwords and then after that I let Dashlane do its magic it can auto fill and remember passwords shipping details but it can also save you hassle and auto generate complicated passwords and if you are used to using very easy to get style passwords then all you have to do is download Dashlane, log in and remember your master password and the rest is history. Since it's a cloud-based service you can use it on any system without saving or copying anything and just put that one master password in. As for safety all your passwords are encrypted safely and there's also a built-in VPN too. Now if you use the link dashlane.com slash techyescity then you can get Dashlane completely free on your first device and if you decide you want to upgrade to a more premium option then you can get 50% off using the link and the coupon code in the description below. Let's get back to the video. AliExpress is an online retailer that was launched back in 2010 and it's very similar to Amazon and also eBay but there are some key differences. The first being that essentially it's only a buy it now website where unlike eBay they have their bidding system as well as also having the offer system that AliExpress doesn't have. But also it differs from Amazon in that Amazon has its own products that it sells directly to the public. AliExpress is essentially only a third party reseller platform. Now AliExpress is actually owned by the Alibaba group who is in the top 10 companies worldwide. The only other Chinese company in this list is Tencent who have their footings in things like Epic Games. So if you play Fortnite and you buy skins and spend money on this game, some of that money is going to one of these top 10 companies. Though the big differences between AliExpress, Alibaba, and also Teobeo, which are all owned by the same company, is that Alibaba is actually business to consumer and business to business. Whereas opposed to AliExpress, that focuses on the single end customer. So you're just buying one thing or you may be buying a few things, but it's really not for business to business. And then Teobeo is actually very similar to AliExpress, where it's essentially the version that's in Chinese for China mainland, as opposed to AliExpress, which is for the Western world. And actually a funny thing about AliExpress is it doesn't sell to mainland China and that it's excluded from the sales zone, even though most of the sellers come from China themselves. So this leads us to the question of, is AliExpress a scam? And I think with that information out of the way, we can see that the platform is huge, it's backed by Alibaba. It's certainly no scam. It's bigger than eBay, in fact. And with that in mind, the platform is no scam whatsoever. Though what about the third-party resellers on this platform? Are you at risk of getting scammed? And I mean, in any platform all over the world, there's always a risk of getting scammed. But I'll tell you about my personal experience now with AliExpress, and that is over the last five years that I've bought things off this platform, I have never once not received my item. So every item I've ordered, I've always got it, and it's always come either pretty quick or it's come very slow. Now with the recent CV outburst worldwide, this has added to shipping delays. And I've actually done a bit more research into this, spoke to my local post office, and they're telling me that on the Australian side, because I live in Australia, that the shipping delays are actually coming from within China themselves, where they're shipping from uh, district to district, and that's adding shipping times to the delays. So basically, if you are to get something pretty quick at the moment out from China, and more specifically AliExpress, then it's usually gonna be from the sellers that are living near the docks and the water or the major airports to ship this stuff out of the country. And so things like, for instance, I did order three different A320 motherboards and one of those sellers, I got the A320 motherboard within two weeks of ordering it, as opposed to some of the other stuff on the desk here, it took me over 45 days to get these items. 
So with that in mind, if you're worried about not receiving your item, and this is another thing we're gonna talk about here, because I used to be over 10 years ago, an eBay seller in Japan. One thing I noticed when I was shipping to certain countries, and I will point out, for instance, I know this happened over in some countries in South Africa, Brazil, for example, sometimes you would ship stuff out and it just wouldn't get there. And I know it's not a problem with the Japanese postal system. And so I heard stories of custom agents actually stealing the packages and it just never showing up to the person who ordered it. So there can be corrupt postage systems within your own country and that's not actually the seller's fault on AliExpress's end. However, that being said, do keep an eye on one important thing and that is when you order an item, there will be a timer, a countdown timer for when you can put in a dispute. So if you haven't received your item, say for instance about 20 minutes before this dispute time ticks off, then you can put in a dispute and say, hey, I haven't received my item, can I get a refund? Or can you show me proof that this item has been sent to me? So that's one thing you can do. Another thing too is, and this is, I have had this happen personally, and that is if you get an item and it's faulty or it's damaged. So I've only ever had two items that have come in in the past that have either been faulty or damaged. One was a snowman cooler that had the fins uh, pretty badly bent. And so I put in a dispute and I said, look, what can you do for me? And they actually sent me out a replacement in its uh, place. But one thing I noticed from then on, a lot of the sellers selling these coolers actually started bubble wrapping the snowman cooler package itself to risk it from getting damaged. So the sellers learned from that. And of course they took care of me in the process. And the second case with the DDR4 memory, one of the two sticks that I bought, so I bought 16 gigabytes with two eight gigabyte sticks of DDR4 memory and one of these sticks ended up being faulty. And so for this, I had to show proof that the memory was faulty and then AliExpress stepped in and I had to send the faulty stick back and then they sent out a replacement. However, this whole process was a bit tedious and it did take about four months in total. So that was easily the worst experience I've had on AliExpress. But regardless, in the end, I've gotten everything that I've paid for and it's all been working 100%. So if you are on a strict budget and what you're buying is very important to you, then do keep an eye on the dispute process. Do make sure you put in something before that timer runs out if there is a problem. However, just like eBay with PayPal, AliExpress has their own payment system called AliPay, which you can sign up and then use your credit card details or your direct debit details to then use this system of payment. You can also directly use your credit card if you wish to. However, there is a problem if you're using uh, cross-currency transactions in that you're buying something in United States dollars and say for instance, my credit card's in Australian dollars, then there will be a fee generally from my bank. However, AliExpress has come a long way in the last few years and they do offer the prices in the local currencies. So if I'm purchasing something from AliExpress, then I can change it into Australian dollars and then I won't occur any credit card fees if I'm directly purchasing off my credit card. Another thing is too, if you are buying not through Alipay and you're using your credit card, then generally things like your credit card will have their own buyer protection built within themselves, especially if you don't receive an item within a three month period. You can then go to your bank and say, hey, I didn't get this item, here's proof that I didn't get it then they can lodge their own dispute through either Visa or MasterCard on your behalf. But I've never had to do this with AliExpress. I've had to do this with something else that I bought within Australia from a completely uh, different type of purchase. Also some other itty gritties in terms of AliExpress is warranties. You're generally, especially if you're getting this shipped internationally, your warranty is only as good as your dispute time. So after the seller's got the money, if the product's been working and then it goes faulty, you're generally not gonna get that one or two year warranty printed on the box because there's no market essentially for that product. And the sellers, they're based in China, they're only gonna warranty that product within China. So shipping that product all the way back and then getting it back, it's just not going to happen. Another thing is too, is that sometimes you can get, uh, say for instance, express mail service, which only takes around five days. So it's shipped internationally within a week to your door. You can pay for this service, but the seller will just send it via regular shipping and then it'll take maybe a month to get to you. So if you've bought the uh, faster shipping option, which sometimes the seller just won't use that express mail service. So it is important to keep track of that. If you've ordered that EMS service and you haven't got it, just put in a dispute and you'll get your money back straight away. Though if you are buying from AliExpress, then there's two more things that you definitely need to be aware of before using this site regularly. And that is, first of all, uh, countries import duties. 
So for instance, in Australia, we have to pay 10% GST on any item we purchase, and that's within Australia, but the Australian government has also made it so if we're buying off Amazon.com, or if we're buying off eBay International, and now AliExpress, they have to add that 10% GST on their items, and then the overlord, AliExpress or eBay, then pays that GST to the Australian government. So depending on where you are, you may even be up for more as well in terms of import duties, and that is if you import a item with a value over a certain level. For instance, in Australia, it is a thousand Aussie dollars, which is about 700 USD. Then if the item's value comes in over that, you'll have to pay additional import duties, which can get quite substantial depending on the item's value. So wherever you are in the world, it's important to research your country's import laws, taxes, and duties, and make sure you do that before you contact the seller and buy something. So you're not getting, I guess, surprisingly stung by this charge that you don't know what it is. However, that being said, the AliExpress sellers, if you specifically ask them in a message when you buy something, you're like, hey, can you mark this down for me? I only think it's worth X amount of dollars, then they can do that for you generally. And now the last but not least point to be aware of with AliExpress is the potential to get counterfeit goods. Now every year globally, over $1.7 trillion of counterfeit products and services are traded. And so this is a huge statistic, but what's even more alarming is that over 80% of this comes from China itself. So one country accounting for 80% of this $1.7 trillion trade of counterfeit products, it is important to know what you're buying before you buy it. So in the case of buying that cheap Louis Vuitton bag, if the price is too good to be true, then you know it's definitely a counterfeit. So keep that in mind before you buy things. Me personally, when I buy off AliExpress, I always buy brands that I've actually usually never heard of or they're their own brand within China themselves that's offering exceptionally good value for money. Take for example, a snowman CPU cooler. This is a Chinese domestic market product that's now being shipped worldwide. It offers extremely good price performance to the point where I think it is the best value for money CPU cooler you can get on the market. Then we've got a budget A320 motherboards, this Challenger board, colorful board, and also this other brand I've never heard of before, Onda. These are coming in very good price points. There's no reason to counterfeit these goods because you can't literally make them any cheaper than what they're selling for. And then the last one we've got on the desk is an RX 470, where it's extremely difficult to counterfeit a graphics card that looks exactly like it. Now, on the note of counterfeit graphics cards, I've never actually seen uh, counterfeit GPUs being sold on AliExpress in recent years. I'd say in the early 2015 stages, I did see a few of them, but they were quick to weed all that out off the site to the point where on eBay, I actually still see counterfeit graphics cards being sold. And I actually did a recent video in Australia for a retailer trying to peddle some counterfeit graphics cards. So I'll put the link up here to that video. But basically when it comes to buying products for me personally off AliExpress, I always buy products that generally are not going to be counterfeited because they're really good value for money. Though with that aside, this now leads us to the pros of buying off AliExpress. I simply find myself buying a lot of cool tech products that offer extremely good value for money pretty much every month off AliExpress. I'll go on there, have a look, see what's good. And of course, in turn, I actually make a lot of content off AliExpress products for you guys here on the channel. I think some of the uh, manufacturers on this website are offering extremely good value for money. And the good thing is that's a worldwide market. So you don't have to worry about living in a remote area where some local retailer is trying to rip you off. And if they are trying to rip you off too much, then you can just circumvent that and go through AliExpress. And you can even now buy pretty much essentially a whole computer that will give you decent value for money off this website. Another big benefit in my opinion to AliExpress too, is that you can sometimes get Chinese domestic market products that were never sold to the West and they come in at really good prices. Uh, last year, for example, there was a CPU called the Ryzen 5 3500X. These were going out very cheap in China and then some of the sellers decided to then sell them worldwide on this marketplace and they offered exceptional value for money at their 110 USD price tag shipped. Though nowadays they've come back on the market and they're pretty much a lot more than they used to be because there was a block on them, there was sort of certain things that weeded out this gray market good from being sold in the Western countries. And so it's not anywhere near the value for money that it used to be. Though essentially if these gray market goods do pop up in whatever field you like shopping in, 
then they can definitely be a good buy. So with all that out of the way, AliExpress, it's one of these things that I personally have used for years now and I'm going to keep using it. I think it can offer extremely good value for money. And in fact, I know it does because I do speak to some distributors in China and they tell me that AliExpress is a super competitive marketplace. So you can get really good deals off this site. Some of my personal favorites, if you guys have uh, been watching the channel for a couple of years now, are Xeon CPUs. You can usually get these for extremely good prices and they offer awesome value for money, as well as RX 470s. I think they're a really good buy because a lot of those are used graphics cards but you can get them for 70 US dollars shipped worldwide, which offers an extremely good value for money proposition, especially if your local markets are overpriced and they are saturated with extremely old PC parts. Anyhow, the last things I will touch on as well before I get on out of here is the Chinese New Year, the Lunar New Year. If you guys are buying within this period, you can expect some extra delays because a lot of companies will just shut up shop for this whole period and won't ship anything out. Uh, until they get back to work. There's also the 11th of the 11th, which is my birthday. This is a special day in uh, AliExpress where they give out some really good sales. It's essentially like AliExpress's equivalent to Black Friday. So if you are on the website during this time, you can get some extremely good discounts. So do stay tuned for those when they come up later this year. Then with all that out of the way, do let us know in the comment section below what have your experiences been like on AliExpress? And also don't forget to hit that like button for us. And with that aside, we've got the question of the day here, which comes from Randy Bobandy. And they asked, does the A320 motherboard have ethernet and RGB headers? In terms of A320 motherboards, you always get an ethernet port on one of these. But in terms of the RGB header, most of the times you will unfortunately not get an RGB header on an A320 motherboard. You'll probably have to upgrade to the B450, and even within the B450, some of those motherboards don't have RGB headers either. So you have to look at the particular board before you buy it to see if it's got that header. And if it does, then you're happy camping. And that's about it around here at Tech Yes City. If you guys have stayed this far and enjoying the content, then be sure to hit that sub button, ring that bell. You'll get the content the moment it drops. Also, sorry about the hiatus. There's a lot going on here behind the scenes this month. It, I guess it's always a crazy month here at Tech City. I'll catch you in the next tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.